Hi, I'm Molo360, and I'm here with the absolutely brilliant and masterful Runners Club 95. Hello, welcome. Oh, yeah, it's only me. Uh, Runners Club is a duo, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Maria doesn't really want to do the whole interview bit, so I take care of that stuff, but we do all the music together. So, I'm speaking for half of the band. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask, um, so uh, how does that work? How does that dynamic work? Like, do you guys like split up the work or do you all, do you both um, do everything together, basically? Uh, for those of you who don't know, me and Maria uh, are a couple, so we live together. And we do like the all, all writing and like the initial creative parts of making the tracks we do together. Sometimes I bring in like an idea to the studio and she brings in ideas to the studio uh, or like a, like a track we like, we, we play to each other and say like, could we make something something with the same kind of feeling as this one? Or I, I like the drum parts in this one, can we, can we build something like that? But mm -hmm. then, uh, so that part we usually do together, and then I usually handle the like the editing and mixing part of it, because I my for Maria this is this is like a hobby. She does this you know on her spare times on evenings and, and weekends, and for me it's a career. So that's why I do like the more like boring parts of it, because I don't always find editing stuff funny. How was like the journey, uh, like your background? both your backgrounds into like building runners club and like creating and all that stuff like what did you listen to before or what got you here mm, so i come from like initially trans music i i got into daft punk when they released discovery and i was like 12 years 11 12 years or so mm -hmm. and and from Daft Punk, I, I then got into trance music. Uh, this is like 2002. And uh, later on, like 2004, 2005, I started to listen to mostly Swedish indie pop. Because so that's when I discovered what you could do with lyrics. And I wanted to make music that that, that had lyrics as the like the import, most important thing, which trance does not. Yeah, I've always been into like smaller subgenres. Like I always had like one foot in pop music because I always want to make something, you know, like a nice melody, like something that you could hear on the radio. But I also always want to draw inspiration and have uh, like the production and the, the overall song idea come from like a subgenre that inspires me. I did that for many years, like the in the pop thing and. Somewhere around 2015, I had like a massive writer's block with my pop stuff. I had gotten into like pressure. It's it's uh, performance pressure. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Performance like, anxiety. Yeah, performance anxiety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I was like, pushing myself to make pop hits, and I just couldn't. And I was in a very bad relation with my creative process. And at that time, in, in the fall of 2015, I had like a magazine, a free music magazine that you can pick up in any store in Stockholm. Wow, uh, what? That's yeah, there's, cool. there, there's a magazine called Jaffa. They've been very nice to us uh, later on in, 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 in written about our music. But at that point, I, I just picked up one of those when I was in a record store or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had an article called something like a hundred genres on Spotify you never heard of. Trying to spark some inspiration, I listened to all of them. I, I googled every single one of them and Wapeway was one of them. So that's that's the first time I heard Wapeway. I can even point out the exact video because the first thing I listened to was one of those uh, YouTube mix uh, mm -hmm. videos. It had something. It was very hard for me to to like define the genre, it was very hard for me to understand it at once and, and I think that sparked some kind of interest. And also the packaging, like mm -hmm. I just found the whole like the concept interesting and I, I fell more and more into it and, and started to try out making like what I thought was Wave to Wave uh, and try to understand the genre and it really uh, helped me get back to 
because that was all new to me. I didn't know the rules. I didn't know how to make it. There were no like radio pop hit aspirations in the genre. So it really helped me find my way back to a healthy way to make music. And Maria, she's she's not into trance at all. She comes more from like it's my impression that she, when she was younger, she was more into like the grunge rock stuff, and and uh, she's also into indie pop. When we met, she played uh, bass in a band. Like she she's more into the on either side of indie. Mm-hmm. I'm more into like can we say like the 1975 side of indie? It's more like the up tempo oh, indie yeah, rock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's you know similar but not the, the exact same side of it. That's so cool. I love the like different like backgrounds and all that stuff. That's awesome. And uh, she does play bass in your uh, your music too. And I saw her play for um, Pat Chennington's Block Party, yeah. which you also have on Spotify. So a little shout out to that. It's also coming on vinyl. Ooh, no way. That it. I'm getting that. <laughs> I'm so down. Um, yeah. I, um, I have two of your vinyls that I'm gonna reveal right now. I I love them. I have Panama Papers and No Sugar Added. Such beautiful vinyls. Um, I actually wanted to know personally, like, how did you come up with the story behind like Panama Papers and the concept, and how did you come up with the story and concept behind sh- No Sugar Added? What story are you thinking about? Like, is there a concept that you built a, um, around these two albums? I, d- I don't think we had like a planned concept on forehand, like... Oh, okay. Because it's just something that we can see afterwards that, you know, oh, many of these songs, you know, deals with the subject of this or that. But for the first album, Panama Papers, because I, I was really into, at the time, I was really into the the act of packaging like a project like learning how to to make the entire package around your music and i saw wave wave and it had like this very uh very clear packaging that everyone you know kind of built their stuff around so i we kind of just said that let's let's just copy this and, and do it ourselves so it was kind of a like yeah let's try to just do whatever everyone else of course we did something slightly different by misinterpreting what everyone else was doing but Mm. that was more like a yeah i remember we had like a day when we were to come up because i i made like two three songs for that album and when i played i think pastel skies that i made afternoon i made talk to you and then i made pastel skies and i played maria pastel skies uh, and I know she has a, a different story about this, but this is how I remember it. Uh, <laughs> I played that one to her one one evening when we were like, you know, I was like, listen what I did today, and you know, we were about to have dinner. Uh, she was like, she loved it, and she she asked me, can I be in on this project? Of course, yeah, I wanted to be. In, I wanted to be in on this. It would be, you know, super fun to have something like that together. And from that on, we started to make everything together. I remember, I remember we we had like one day, and I was like, okay, this day I just wanted to like brainstorm a lot of names that we could have as a band name, and then in the evening both of us came with like a list of 10, 20 names each, like something like this, something like that. Many of those later on became song titles, but in the end we just went with Runners Club 95 because at the time I was doing a lot of long distance running, I the sports theme of it but i remember we also had spongebob vapor pants that was one of no. the <laughs> yes no. I, that's wonderful I'm, I'm pretty glad we didn't go with that one now yeah runners club 95 is a great name i feel like uh spongebob vaporwave pants is that what it was that's a SpongeBob that's iconic i i think you should definitely do Would something with of- that, maybe like a one song or something. <laughs> That's iconic. I I love that. Uh, my- uh, for a it, yeah, but that's like it. That's kind of like more of like a, a like a joke. <laughs> kind of I love it though. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I don't think there was like a like a 
lyrical concept before we wrote the album. If there are any like common mm-hmm. common things throughout the album, it's just I guess it's just like a coincidence or just because we at that coincidence. It's, it's, well, perhaps not coincidence, but more like we didn't actively do it. It was more mm-hmm. just because those were the things we were thinking about at the time. And therefore they were represented in many of our songs. Wow. I actually, my favorite song uh, ever is Post School Sadness. I literally listen to that every day uh, after work, before work. And I'm like, I feel this so much. It's like, I go to work and I feel stressed. I go to school and I feel stressed, all that stuff. And then like, you know, Instagram is ruled by skinny girls. I was like, whoa. Is that true though? I felt at the moment it was very true then. I still, Uh, I feel like it's still true because, you know, Instagram has like this fake reality. I think I was, at the moment I was, kind of is opposing like when is that the right word for it like you feel like you don't really agree with something you just want to question something and at the moment i felt like gain fame on instagram Mm -hmm. like if if you were a skinny girl in in a bikini that's all you needed to do yep still do yep it's true, yeah. It is still so true. I mean, yeah. not just for Instagram, but social media. And I feel like that song is kind of like combating that, like combating social media. And I, I thought, I just thought in my head, what I took from it was like, this is, this is spot on, and I like it, and it, it makes sense in my life. <laughs> and like, I, yeah, I, I feel very honest. Like, especially in that intro. Yeah, yeah. That was very honest lyrics in the way that I I couldn't allow myself to be that honest in, in my pop music. Mm. I don't know why, but, but somehow there were like no filters there. That, that was like, I, I came home from work one day and we had like a session and that was like the, those were, were the thoughts I had straight on, like, and I guess, and yeah, I, I guess that you know when when you're you, when you're so honest and so unfiltered, it it you can feel that. Mm-hmm. I hope you can feel that. I, I felt to... it. I felt it so yeah. hardcore. I was obsessed. Uh, uh, I could not stop listening to Panama Papers and that song in particular too was. My Funny thing about that, song, that the project file uh, on my computer is called Simpson Wave. Yeah. Uh, before we named it Post School Sadness. And I think I had watched the Frank Jav C video about how to make Simpson wave. And <laughs> I liked that song he made in that one. So I was like, let's let's try and make something like that. So I think there's some some sounds in that song inspired by his Simpson Wave song. Wow. Of oh. course it's Post School Sadness doesn't sound anything like, you know, the seems some way genre but yeah wow yeah shout out frank jassy he is amazing at what he does um so i wanted to ask uh, what what's next for runners club if you could give us any details on what do you have coming up uh yeah let's see this is not gonna air in in another couple of weeks yeah <laughs> so by that time we're gonna have a collab with Blood Wave out. Oh my god, that's gonna be... I love Blood Wave. Yeah, and he was one of the first artists we... You know, the first... Remember I talked about the um, the first Wave Wave mix I ever heard? He was like the first artist on that uh, mix. So it's a very possible... It's very possible that he was the first Wave Wave artist I ever heard. So it's, it's really fun to... To, to have that collab with him. And uh, yeah, I think it will be out in a week. Ooh. From that, yeah, so, so when this airs, it's gonna be out already. Oh, um, okay. We're working on our next album. Currently on a little hiatus because I'm doing this live show. It's taking some time to prepare, mm-hmm. but 
I'm also trying to to write and produce for other artists. So you know, stuff get in the way, but I'm prioritize prioritizing our next album. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give away too much about it. Uh, it's a fairly I'm always very sure that this time the wave wave community is going to reject us. This is like this is it. You're out. And I felt like this with every single thing we put out, like everything, even Panama Papers. I was 100% sure that I was going to get hit with the, um, this is not wave wave, go away. So I'm just assuming that's what's going to happen. But, but you know, we... There's always listeners for everything, you know? Uh, I'm sure that yeah. it'll do good for a lot of people. I really, like I said before, I like highly respect you and I really love your work. I'll listen to whatever you put out. I will be one of those listeners. I I'm like that. I think mean, there are like a, like a few of the people that you know, because because even though we're a very you know small band mm-hmm. in a small genre, I feel like we really have been getting a lot of. Uh, support and I'm very grateful for that and that you know really that really makes us want to push it like we want to deliver something really really good to give something back to everyone that's you know reaching out to us or buying our vinyls and and, and supporting us uh, and that's great I love that you know you're putting a little more uh, you, you know perfection uh, is really good i don't know that's that's all i have to say it's like that's great yeah, for you <laughs> dumb is better than perfect yeah yeah so i don't know and uh, like we we have about i don't know four or five tracks ready now it's gonna take some time i wanted it to be out like this summer it's not gonna happen this summer because you know stuff mm-hmm. but it's gonna um, so that's something for everyone to look forward to. Oh my god. Yes. Are you gonna play First, any songs? Any songs in the set? Like any new songs or no? No. No, okay. I just went through the set, no. There's not gonna be any new songs. We're gonna play some songs that we haven't played live before and we're gonna play some songs in like new edits and new versions oh, that yes. Yeah, so I cannot wait. Oh my god, thank you. I wanted to ask also if you have any shout outs, like if you want to shout out anyone or please do so, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I could shout out to like, yeah, I want to of course shout out to Maria. Shout out. Doing it with me. And uh, I don't know, I want to shout out to you for inviting us for this uh, event. Thank you. Like, and be careful. Yeah. And Leo. Yeah. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you for uh, joining me today. I cannot wait to see your set. Um, I'm sure everyone is looking forward to to it. Um, thank you. And uh, everyone, have a good time. <laughs> have a good time. Bye-bye. Bye.